Dead Space was always the type of game that stood out to me. It was a game that shared similar DNA to one of my favorite games of all time, Resident Evil 4. Attaching the player to our main character with a third person over the shoulder viewpoint has been one of my favorite staples when it comes to horror games. Part of the ride the game provides is seating you front and center and all the action and jam packed jump scares our own protagonists will have to endure. Dead Space was no stranger to this, in fact I would say that the atmosphere within the game's presence is almost stronger because of this. Something I really enjoyed about Dead Space is that nothing was ever certain, like I wasn't going to be able to go and shoot my way out of a situation or just run away from my problems, I always had to think quickly on my feet about how to get out of most situations. And using limbs from necromorphs or objects just laid about to become a weapon for a brief second just to have another problem to solve seconds later always kept me gripped for what's to come next. So this weekend I got the chance to play the new Dead Space, and upon completing its story I was pleasantly surprised to see the familiarity mixed with jaw-dropping enhancements. The game's story is unlocked in sections that are presented to you in ways that they haven't been before. Connecting paths to previous locations for fluid movement to and from objectives all allow you to have a unique experience on how you traverse the Ishimura. Side quests are built in to add into the story and to find out just how many people really knew what was going on. Something I really enjoyed in this remake over the original was finding out even more about the survivors on the Ishimura. Most of the text logs and audio logs scattered about go into depth on the artifact found in Aegis 7 and why they dug up the alien artifacts to begin with, as well as uncovering the truth about the marker and what effects it has on the human psyche. A huge change in the right direction for me was the shift of how certain characters even felt. For instance, our CEC security officer Zack Hammond has a different presence than that of his predecessor. His character and his demeanor tell us that the marker has consumed him. It's plagued him of his true sight of his comrades in need. And in my opinion, I think Hammond is more likable here in the remake than that of the original. And with that being said, even our computer specialist, Kendra Daniels, has this change of character during the course of the game. Not that her character doesn't do exactly what you'd expect, but she is almost more believable to be somebody who you should side with at the end of the story. But just like the original, the marker has a grip over all of us, and seeing the horror that Isaac has to face is just unrelenting and unforgiving. Overall though, these types of enhancements I really wasn't expecting, but it's definitely something I was very happy to see. Something that both Downfall and Aftermath did really well was show off its surviving cast, and although Isaac is our main character, he is carried by a supporting cast in this remake. Speaking of supportive cast, the USG Ishimura is a character in itself. Unfolding the horrors within its dark lit corridors has been a blast from familiar locations to subtle new ones. The Ishimura hosts the stranded marker aboard from Aegis 7 and just like before, the presence is made abundantly clear right from the start. The marker and as well as its believers are made whole. Necromorphs are all over the place and they're just as deadly as ever. And the only thing my trusty plasma cutter needs is more ammo to sever their ties to it. Something I don't think many people have spoken about is how nice the variety of weapons and their upgrades feel in this remake. Most, if not all of the weapons now have this added weight to them, from the sounds to the power of each pull of the trigger, it just feels right. Now the real reason I say that this is probably one of the most faithful remakes we've ever had is because it feels like the dev team truly understood what encapsulates the genuine horror within the game. I mean we've had a number of remakes in the past that change either the gameplay, the story, the mechanics of the game drastically and sometimes that really isn't needed. Sometimes it's better to just have it remain as true to its successor as possible. I'm sure Motive knew this going in. but. To see such a rebirth of one of my favorite games has been truly eye-opening, one might say. With very nuanced changes and overall a better highlighted story, it does feel refreshing to play again nearly 15 years later. All in all, I'm very pleased and 2023 has been very kind to us so far. I hope that even with Resident Evil 4 on the horizon, we can continue to enjoy this nice nostalgic trip once again. Now if you don't mind, I need to make myself whole again. So, see you soon.